As predicted here, after his very first presidential debate on MSNBC, Rick Perry's support is falling and falling fast. A new Fox News poll of Republican voters shows that Perry has handed his front runner status back to Mitt Romney, who is now in the lead with 23% of the vote. Perry dropped 10 points to 19% of the vote. And Herman Cain has replaced Michelle Bachman as the hopeless candidacy that Republicans like best. Cain is now polling third at 17%, which is a gain of 11 points for him. Michelle Bachman is the tragic figure in this poll, which shows her settling into a tie for last place with Rick Santorum at 3%. The Bachman team need never again worry about how she might look on magazine covers. Her 15 minutes of presidential campaign fame may be over sooner than anyone expected. Today's New York Post reports that the cash crunch in the Bachman campaign is so bad that she might not even make it to the Iowa caucuses. According to the Post, Bachman's skeletal staff are holding their collective breath until the deadline to disclose her fundraising report on October 15th. A computer vendor has called her campaign headquarters threatening to shut down the power due to an outstanding bill. The Fox News poll shows Newt Gingrich finally crawling into the middle with 11 percent, a gain of eight points. Ron Paul holding steadily at six, while only four percent of Republicans feel inclined to vote for someone as reasonable sounding as John Huntsman. The political media and the Republican billionaires who are ready to fund him may be eager for New Jersey Governor Chris Christie to run for president, but Republican voters can take him or leave him. 40% say Chris Christie should run for president in 2012, but a solid 33% say Christie should not run for president. Mitt Romney tried out a new line to defend against the accurate charge that he is a flip-flopper. In the private sector, if, if you don't change your view when the facts change, well, you'll get fired for being stubborn and stupid. All right. And, and so it was Winston Churchill said, when the facts change, I change too, madam. What do you do? Meanwhile, Rick Perry unwisely tried to prove that he is smarter than someone. Well, smarter than anyone isn't a good thing for him to try to prove. In this case, he tried to tell CNBC viewers that he, Rick Perry, is smarter than Warren Buffett. I'm curious about your thoughts on the Buffett rule, and it goes to some of this class warfare issue. Well, I think it gets right down to the real problem that we've got in Washington, D.C., uh, is an administration that is listening to people who really don't have an understanding about what's going on out there in the real world. You, you think Warren Buffett I, you know, does I it? Respect you, don't, Mr. you don't think that Warren Buffett... I think Mr. I, I think Mr. Buffett is a, a really uh, uh, intelligent individual, but I can promise you, he didn't know what's going on in places that uh, where the job creation is at a, at a zero uh, because of overtaxation and overregulation. And Herman Cain has bravely and irrelevantly ruled out running on a ticket with Rick Perry. Could you support Rick Perry if he were the nominee? Today, I could not support Rick Perry as the nominee for a host of reasons. Him being soft on securing the border is one of the reasons. I feel very strongly about the need to secure the border for real, the need to enforce the laws that are already there. So that's where I think he and I have a basic fundamental difference of opinion. Realizing that the president's poll numbers make his reelection seem like an uphill battle at this point, the vice president offered an important political reminder in a radio interview in Florida today. There was a guy I knew who used to be the mayor of Boston back in the 70s. And the press was, you know, uh, asking him legitimate questions and, and po uh, pointing out he was sagging in the polls. And he looked at him and he said, look, don't compare me to the almighty. Compare me to the alternative. <laughs> and that's what's going to happen here right now. Understandably, totally legitimate. This is a referendum on Obama and Biden, the nature of the state of the economy. It's soon going to be a choice. It's soon going to be a choice. 
That mayor the vice president was referring to, of course, was, as Bostonians know, Kevin White, who is Boston's mayor for 16 years. And in his day, he was on the Democratic Party's shortlist for Joe Biden's job. Joining me now are Howard Feynman, editorial director for the AOL Huffington Post Media Group and MSNBC analyst, and Ron Carey, former chief of staff to Congresswoman Michelle Bachman and former chairman of the Minnesota Republican Party. Thank you both for joining me tonight. Hi, Lawrence. Thank you, Lawrence. Uh, Ron Carey, I wanted to get your take on the, the status of the Bachman campaign at this point. Uh, does that New York Post item today make sense to you that she's in trouble financially and, and maybe running out of gas soon? Well, Michelle's always had some difficulty raising money from the major donors that can give up to $5,000 per campaign. The lifeblood of her campaign is the small dollar donor who writes $25, $50 checks. And she has perhaps the largest donor file of any conservative candidate, uh, whether it be Congress, Senate, or any activist. Uh, so she has a, a wide uh, spectrum of people to draw upon. But the question is, will they still give? Because are uh, they going to write that $25 check if they think her campaign is dead in the water? And I guess the next 30 to 60 days will show whether or not uh, they still believe enough in her campaign versus Herman Cain, Rick Santorum, or somebody else to make sure that her $25 check goes to her and not to one of the, one of the other candidates. Uh, Ron, I just want to read something uh, you wrote earlier in the year uh, of your experience. Uh, working for Bachman, you said the Bachman campaign and congressional offices I inherited were wildly out of control. Stacks upon stacks of unopened contributions filled the campaign office while thousands of communications from citizens waited for an answer. If she is unable or unwilling to handle the basic duties of a campaign con or a congressional office, how could she possibly manage the magnitude of the presidency? What about managing the magnitude of a presidential campaign? Well, that is right up, you're exactly right there. I mean, my point in writing that is that while she can serve as a member of Congress, I, I spoke out because I didn't feel as she was up to the task of being president of the United States. And as a conservative, I feel we have a responsibility to get behind a candidate that, if elected, uh, does have the skill set required to handle the most difficult job in the world. And I didn't believe when I wrote that, and I still don't believe that Michelle Bachman is prepared to be president of the United States. Howard, speaking of prepared to be president of the United States, Herman Cain, who has replaced Michelle Bachman as the unlikely favorite uh, among uh, voters willing to vote for people who don't have a chance to become president. Uh, is he on track uh, for the Bachman trajectory here, which is, you know, surge up into 17, 18 percent around there, you know, run third, maybe even run second in polling and then just flame out? Well, possibly, Lawrence, although I was astonished to hear a uh, top handler for one of the other top candidates uh, tell me, or rather say to me in, a, in an email, uh, various things that he thought may, uh, made uh, Herman Cain's record on the issues uh, an impossible sell. In other words, Herman Cain has gotten the attention of, uh, of the other leading contenders to the point where they're actually looking at his record. Uh, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're, yeah. There, which, which is which is progress for Herman Cain. Or, that's a big compliment. To that's Herman a big Cain. compliment. Yeah. They said, you know, he voted for TARP. Don't forget, he was <laughs> pro TARP. And let's look at him on immigration because he wants to give control to too much control to individual states and so forth. So I think they're taking notice of him. It's hard not to with the Fox News poll showing uh, Herman Cain shooting up from six percent to I think seventeen percent in in their latest poll. There's no question that he did a a bang-up job down in Florida the other day, and, you know, Florida really matters in the whole scheme of things. Ron Kerry, I'd like to get your conservative Republican perspective on the Christie for president phenomenon uh, that may or may not turn out to be real. Uh, we know that uh, Rush Limbaugh is very suspicious of it, saying that, you know, Christie isn't really one of them. He isn't really a ditto head Limbaugh guy, uh, hardcore conservative. How do you think Christie would be received in this campaign? I think he would probably suffer the same fate of Rick Perry, where he may jump out there as the flavor of the month, but once you start to, so, so to speak, peel the onion back and look at some of the different positions, uh, you're going to find there's going to be issues where he may not be in sync with all the conservatives across the country. And what, one of the things that the conservatives are looking for is they're looking for authenticity this election cycle. And they're looking at somebody who has a consistent record. And that's what's uh, Mitt Romney's biggest challenge right now is his inconsistent record as a conservative, because we've been burned before as conservatives. I look at Richard 
Nixon. He's the one who introduced wage and price controls and uh, went to China. And you look at George H.W. Bush, where he said, read my lips, no new taxes, and then raise taxes. We have been promised by candidates in the past that they would uh, govern as conservatives only to do things that the you know, liberals probably wouldn't even try to do. So that's where you know we are looking for somebody who is authentic, uh, authentic as a conservative that we can trust. And that's why I think you're seeing that there's going to be a search for that authentic, uh, authentic uh, conservative, you know, whether it be a Herman Cain or Rick Santorum. You know, Michelle Bachman's had her chance up to bat, and uh, you know, and Michelle is very authentic as her, her beliefs. But I think that's where it comes down to you have, you have to be authentic, but you also have to be electable and ready to serve. And it really takes somebody who can, can uh, ring the bell in all three aspects. And that's what really Republican conservative activists are looking for at this point. Herman Cain is the person who's being tested right now. I think Chris Christie would uh, face the same fate, though, as uh, Rick Perry, where uh, you know, he looks good on paper, then you start digging into it, and he might find some flaws that would make people flee. Howard, speaking of authenticity in Republican politics... Mr. Donald Trump, uh, the, uh, the candidates have been making the pilgrimage to New York uh, to kiss the ring or whatever it is that uh, Trump offers them to kiss in, in his office. And uh, it turns out in the Fox News poll, there's some very useful information that they should check before they you know, make those plane reservations to New York. The yes. Fox News poll says the Trump endorsement, uh, of the Trump endorsement, 6% say they would be more likely to vote for a Trump-endorsed candidate, and 31% say that would make them less likely to vote for that candidate. So basically it costs you 25% of the electorate if you, if you go up there and, and beg Donald for his attention. Well, a couple things, Lawrence. First of all, that 6% are all, they've all been on The Apprentice. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that, that's, that's number one. Number two, <laughs> Donald, Donald Trump sort of stands in extreme form for a lot of the kinds of rich guy Republicans in and around the metropolitan New York area who are pining away for Chris Christie. Uh, Chris Christie made his bones as a, an anti-union guy in New Jersey, which takes some guts in New Jersey. And when, he, and when Chris Christie went out to speak at the Ronald Reagan Library, he waxed eloquently in his speech about how Ronald Reagan's great moment was the Patco strike when he busted the air con traffic controllers union. So that plays really well kind of at the uh, Union League Club in Manhattan and so forth. Uh, but that's not enough, as Ron was saying, for, for Christie. I think in certain respects, if Christie gets in, which I don't expect him to do, he would actually be as much of a threat to, to Mitt Romney because a lot of the dissatisfaction among the big money guys in New York is that they rightly are skeptical of whether Mitt Romney can really sell. I mean, Mitt Romney's been out there now for months and months, if not years and years. In the latest Fox poll, he's still only at 23 percent. You talk to his people, they're confident. They think Mitt Romney's the kind of the tortoise in the race, and people will kind of settle for Romney. They're kind of res resigned to the fact that people aren't really excited about their candidate, but they think somehow they'll muddle through with him. And, you know, there's still a lot of people who... Uh, both conservatives and non-conservatives in the Republican Party who want some exciting candidates. It's par partly it's just that. Christie's got some charisma, and that's what makes him attractive. Thanks to Howard Feynman of MSNBC and the Huffington Post. And thank you very much, Ron Carey, former chief of staff for Congressman Michelle Bachman, for sharing your insights tonight on Republican voters' thinking.